With the 2023 general election less than two years away, Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, is battling to remain relevant in the political landscape. Not only is it losing state governors and other members to the ruling All Progressive Congress at the alarming rate, it is contending with an internal crisis, threatening its capacity to provide a counterbalance to the antics of the APC. To discuss the latest crisis to hit the party and how he intends to present a united front to challenge the APC, we are now being joined from our Abuja studio by National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Kola Ologodino. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ologodino. It's a pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, let's just go straight to it. Uh, they say things are falling apart and the center in the PDP cannot hold any longer. There's a gale force wind of defections here and there and the PDP is losing its mettle. How are the mighty fallings? falling? And I ask you this question in local parlance, how market? <laughs> the market is doing well. It's not as bad as you are presented. Okay. Um, uh, um, uh, Rufai, from your opening, from your opening remark, you said that you said, um, and I quote, that we are battling to remain relevant. I totally object to that. The People's Democratic Party, in your language, will have been, we are the party to watch. It's the People's Democratic Party. It's the only party that has to spread in all the villages, towns, and cities of Nigeria. In virtually every ward, every local government, every state. So, 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 don't judge us by the virtue of the fact that the people you see at the top are living. The ordinary people out there, the very ordinary people out there, have remained in the People's Democratic Party. And I give you a data, I'll give you a data to support my argument this morning. We are, we are, we are planning to begin the e-registration exercise of our party on... August 9, we'll do a formal launching on August 9. In doing that, the logo that we are going to use was placed on the internet last Friday. Between that Friday night and Sunday evening, we had no fewer than 1 million hits of Nigerians who are desirous of registering with the People's Democratic Party. Not even INEC could achieve that under 48 hours. So People's Democratic Party no matter what we are seeing in the outside of it, no matter the perception that is being created by what the media choose to call gale, gale of defection, I can assure you that we are standing strong and prepared to oust this inept administration of the All Progressives Congress and President Mahmoud Bari. Well, are you saying, uh, Mr. Kola, that it's okay for people at the top to leave and the party is not bothered by that? Is that what you mean by that statement that the real people in the party are not leaving, it's those at the top that are leaving? Is that what you're trying to suggest? And let me ask you because, I, I, uh, I, I, Mr. Kola, let me land on this because one of the issues brought by the seven members of the National Working Committee that left is that the leadership of the party has failed to show the ability to resolve internal crises. Adesua, I want to be, I want you to understand okay. that there's no way I will sit down here and say that certain people are important in the PDP and certain people are unimportant in the People's Democratic Party. No, I won't say that and I have not said that. Okay. Everybody, every member of the party is very important. But having established that fact, the people who left the party were elected members of the National Executive Committee. They are not members of the National Working Committee, but we're all elected on the same day. However, we have different responsibilities as assigned to us by the Constitution of the People's Democratic Party 2017 as amended. And as such, those who have left, or those, sorry, those who resigned, did not, resi did not resign from the National Working Committee. But at the same time, there are reports in public space that they said they didn't resign, they only filed a notice of resignation. There are also reports in public place that they said they might rethink, as demanded by stakeholders of the party, that they might rethink their position. And that's why I want to make one fact clear. We are human beings. 
we are bound to make mistakes, to have errors. But in our reaction, we must learn to be temperate. Because those who assign these responsibilities to us have given us assignment to act and behave on their behalf. And, and as such, and as such, I believe as whether we are members of the National Working Committee or we are members of NEC, we must be temperate in the way we react to issues. It is an opportunity that has been given to us. And we must be prepared to make sacrifices at any point in time when we have been called upon to make sacrifices. We must ensure that the responsibility that is assigned to us is like an egg placed on our hands. We must ensure that it doesn't drop and crash. Very, very important. But having established that, I never said that certain category of people are important, the other categories are not important. But I don't want, what I, what I don't enjoy is when people talk about, oh, implosion, about Gale. The Good Democratic Party is stable and it will remain so. Okay, Kola. Obviously, there are certain things you know that uh, the public may not know. Is all this all about a game? Or is it about personality conflict? Because we've had many versions of this PDP story about money exchanging hands and all of that, you know. And uh, you just mentioned now that uh, people gave notice of resignation and that they will not resign, you know. Uh, is it that some people are just playing games with the party, money exchanging hands? I've asked stories about a certain 50 million per person moving around, you know, and that all of this is just a game. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, nothing will happen. Well, I don't know whether you want to go into that because that would sound like inside baseball. But can you assure us uh, about the outcome of this, uh, you know, uh, process and also about... Uh, the conflict resolution mechanism. How far has the party gone with that conflict resolution uh, mechanism? And what should we expect? Well, well th th thank you, Dr. Abati. Uh, you, have, you, have been, you have experienced this side, and you are also experiencing the other side. The, 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 the political arena is an environment just like the family, as we have it. People can disagree, yeah. people can agree. What we are having currently is a situation in which members, officers of the party, are expressing displeasure on certain things that had happened within the party or that's happening within the party. These are normal. They are not things that are outside of the world. In every family space, there has bound to be conflict. But like I said earlier on, sir, what's important is that we should be temperate in our reactions because we have been assigned a duty. We have been assigned a responsibility. In carrying out that responsibility, we must ensure that we conduct our affairs and conduct our own ways in manners that will engender harmonious relationship even within the larger party. But in respect of allegations and comments about people collecting money and all that, nobody has told me that I collected money. Nobody has offered me any form of money, and I cannot speak to what I don't know. But I did not glaringly say that those who have given notice of resignation are coming back. I didn't say all are coming back, but I'm aware that a number of them have rethinked their position or are rethinking their position and they, 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 they might return to the past, they might return to their to their respective offices. Having said that, Doctor, it's also important to say and let through you let the world know that the mechanism for resolving internal issues or internal uh, disagreements has been set. Part of it was the fact that the national chairman met with these deputies, held discussions with them, and they said that, okay, they have heard from the national chairman on behalf of the National Working Committee, and that they are proceeding to have another meeting, and that after that meeting, they will, return, they will get back to the party. I'm also aware that at various stratum of the party, that leaders are meeting and discussing how to take the party 
out of the current situation in which it has found itself. I plead and I urge the media to once again give the People's Democratic Party the opportunity to be able to, 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 to look at all the issues politically and in the manner it has happened and don't help us to fester the crisis. Uh, uh, Mr. Logudino, uh, a lot of people and a lot of watchers and some people say that the PDP is suffering from the earthquake of cash and that if you don't have a... Earthquake of what? Earthquake of cash, money. And that if you don't have a counter-spending <laughs> power, you can't win this earthquake of cash that is happening now in the PDP. Do you think that the party chairman, Mr. Uche Secundus, or Prince Uche Secundus, has that metal, that muscle, to withstand this earthquake of money that is going through the PDP as we speak? Rufai, <laughs> this is a question. <laughs> it's, very funny. it's very funny to me. Earthquake of cash? And whether Prince Uche Secundus, the chairman of the party, has the capacity to match it? The question is for the national chairman of the party to answer. But let me say this. That I'm not aware of an earthquake of cash in the People's Democratic Party. Well, you, you speak of the uh, internal resolution mechanism being activated. I want to ask you, how confident are you of that mechanism working? Uh, because despite the Bukala-led um, reconciliatory committee crossing the country to mend fences, it has failed to stop the defections, even though you don't like the word gale or, or crisis. But those who have left, such as the governors, and just yesterday the BOT member, Joy Modi, they feel otherwise that your party is stable. So how confident are you that you will resolve this crisis, which is what it is in your party? Adeswa, thank you very much. You know, the political in the political environment, there's what we call the season of defection. If you recall, ahead of the 2019 election, also, we had governors of APC joining the People's Democratic Party. We have members of the parliament joining the People's Democratic Party across the board. We are in the first leg of the season. Although that is not the way politics ought to be played, but in our own part of the world here, that is something that has come, become a part of us, unfortunately. But notwithstanding, I can tell you clearly, and I'm sure we have discussed this matter on the same platform before. And I did say that none of the governors who left the People's Democratic Party declared that they were leaving because of crisis or because of certain inabilities within the People's Democratic Party. People are driven by their respective passions. People are driven by their own dreams. Whether they can attain it or they cannot attain it is indifferent to a politician. All he knows is that he has this ambition. He must pursue it. So for this category of people, like Governor Umahi, like Governor Yadi, like even Matawali, they never said they left the party because they were dissatisfied with the party. The only person who came close to that argument was Governor Umahi. And his reason was that there was injustice in the People's Democratic Party. And the party asked a question. Was it when he was chairman of the party that there was injustice? Was it when he was deputy governor that it was injustice? Was it when he became governor first time and is running the second time on the platform of the party that there was injustice? And even the party that he has gone to, which is the APC, if his desire, his pursuit or aspiration was to become the president of Nigeria, have they offered him the ticket in the APC? So people move from party to party because they are driven by their own passions. They are driven by their own desires. And I insist, even parliamentarians that are living, what is their reason for living? Some of them are living on sympathetic grants. For instance, the people that were elected, that, 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 that were elected with uh, Governor Matawali believe that, oh, if the governor is going and the governor said I should follow him, I have to follow him, and they have left. We have similar cases in Nemo State where people that were elected on the platform of the PDP as soon as the number four, as soon as number four became number one, and the uh, and Supreme Court said that uh, uh, it has to be the current governor of Imo State, some people left. These are some sympathetic defections. 
So we cannot, on account of that, hold the National Working Committee or hold the leadership responsible. In the case of Governor Matawali in Zamfara State, first he said that Governor Wiki was a, was a, that Governor Wiki was a commissioning project. He was inviting people. He didn't invite him. In another, in another voice, he said they supported the Sokoto State with funds. They didn't support him. Uh, in, another, in another matter, he said that uh, uh, APC people are, more, are encouraging him more than PDP in time of crisis. And at the end of the day, the governors of PDP visited Zamfara and doled out funds to support his administration. Did that stop him from leaving? So people are driven by their own passions. They are driven by their own interests. But what's important to us in the People's Democratic Party is that we are convinced that the people, the ordinary people out there, matter a lot. In the 2019 election, APC was in charge of your State, PDP won it. In Imo, Governor Okorocha, former Governor Okorocha, and APC, they were in Imo State, PDP won it. In Bochi, APC, PDP won it. In Adamawa, APC, PDP won it. So it does not follow that, oh, because there are challenges within the party now, and the, the party, like uh, my brother and friend Rufai has said, uh, is, uh, uh, has a uh, uh, it has, uh, how do, is battling to remain is battling to remain relevant. No, I don't think so. I believe that the party will move from the current situation to become stronger, more united, and provide the leadership that will take us, that will take the APC out of government in 2020. Well, Kola, one person that has been uh, mentioned in the midst of this uh, crisis that the party faces is the governor of River State, Yesom Wike. Is he guilty as charged? Because he's been accused of being the one I'm not aware of, I'm not trying a, to... Dr. Dr. Abati. No, let me finish a, now. I'm, I'm not aware... I'm, okay, finish, finish. You know, you ask a question. Uh, you say uh, not, no, I'm not finished. Maybe you have put me on the spot in the court. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just started phrasing the question. Because we have had... Umar Sani was here. Okay. And it was quite unequivocal yes. in saying that, look, the problem with the party is uh, Governor Ian Sumwike of River State. And, you know, I've told him I'm a bit surprised because I thought uh, Prince Secondos and Ian Sumwike uh, are brothers. What happened? So, I mean, you are the uh, secretary, publicity secretary of the party. So you probably know if uh, their friendship has gone sour and Wike is guilty as charged. The second part of uh, my question has to do with the plan by the party to take uh, Governor Matawale, who defected to the APC, to court. But in the case of, uh, you know, uh, the governor of Mbonye State, this, the party did not go to court. In the case of the governor of River State, the uh, party did not go to court. Uh, what informed the decision on the part of the party this time to say, well, in Matawale's case, we want to push the envelope on the uh, fact that uh, the mandate belongs to the party. Well, on the issue of uh, uh, whether Governor Wiki is guilty as charged, I can clearly say that I'm not aware of any charges. And in respect of the relationship between Governor Wiki and the national chairman, going sour or smooth, it is only which is a conduit or governor is on I can speak to that. It's not within the purview of responsibility of the National Publicity Secretary to engage in rumor and muscling. We are not involved in that. But on the issue of going to court, I can clearly say that, yes, we went to court in the case of Matawali, and that we are confident of victory in that matter. However, the fact that we have not gone to court in the other state, does not foreclose the fact that we might still go to court to challenge the process of their defection. Those who are in the parliament, their case is, their case is very settled. As a matter of fact, their matter is, should be, you are a lawyer, I'm not. But from what lawyers have told me, their, their matter should, be, should have been self-activated. But you know we have a parliament that, that does not understand the onions of, uh, of what they are doing. And, uh, and that, that, that says that, oh, Whatever the executive says, correct. So if you depart, if you, if you left your party and went to another party, and the constitution says that once you do that, except there's a case or a serious crisis, that you should leave your, you should vacate the, the seat. They will not do that. 
for obvious reasons. Otherwise, it should have been self-activated. The Senate President should have written to the Chairman of INEC, declaring their seats vacant and ordering for fresh election. But whether they are ready to do that or not, the party has taken a decision to go to court on the matter of every seat in which defection has happened against the Republican Party. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people are saying the PDP smells blood now from that Akira Dolu, Itaya Jagadek judgment. Uh, do you smell blood as, as regards attack on the APC? Because that was a split decision. There's been many interpretations to it. Section 183 of the Constitution. Uh, in further, you know, elections, not even elections, in further dealings, would you explore that to attack the APC? No, it's not, it's not, that for, you've seen it's not for It's not for us. To, no, we, we have, we have uh, um, uh, Rufai, if you have been following the trajectory of our narratives on the issue of Mehma Laboni, the PDP was the first to come out to declare his seat vacant, yeah, to declare that uh, he's not fit, and that any action that, that is taken by his committee will be a nullity. We did that immediately that President Muhammadu Buhari dissolved their neck, dissolved their NWC, and they dissolved all the structure. And we said, look, your party has ceased to exist. If PDP had done it by now, INEC would have been asking, we have withdrawn our certificate. And our expectation of INEC today is to withdraw the certificate of APC. Statutorily, they no longer exist. And as we are speaking, we don't know how they will come out of the crisis as we speak. Because they have no statutory body, as we're speaking now, that can act on behalf of the party, that can write even ordinary letter to anywhere. It, is, it, goes, beyond, it goes beyond the issue of even Akiri Dolu. I think that judgment only made the point which we latch on as a party and say, look, this is what we told you people that time. You are no longer a political party. How can you have a party that doesn't have a national working committee, that doesn't have a neck, that doesn't have a board of trustees? They never had a board of trustees. And all their structure, downright, to the world level, had stands But, 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 but Mr. Okay, Lugu, your, you want to your own national this, working committee is, is in disarray now. To bring your own structure. national working yeah, committee believe, is in disarray now. If, if, no, 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 no. Rufay, Rufay, leave that. Please, let's leave that. Let us face the fact. Okay. Let's face the issues as they come. Rufay, as media practitioners, we have a responsibility to build this democracy. Look, it's, it's, our, it's our job, it's our cause. Today, NBC, NBC, NBC is chasing every broadcast station. Every broadcast station. They, are, they, are finding, they are raising fines against broadcast station. They are blocking voices. So we will now shift from here and shift to one party state. What do you think will happen? So we have a duty. We have a duty to hold parties accountable. We have a responsibility to secure the, the, democrat, uh, the democratic space. It's very important to fight. So don't let us go to the issue of, uh, of uh, PDP is in crisis. PDP is in crisis. Which crisis? There are provisions in our constitution that says that if this, if this, if this happened, this is the way to go about it. If that should happen, that is the way to go about it. So we have such, we have such in our constitution. Mr. Lokbodia, so very quickly. Can, whatever the situation is. We can, we can if you can hear me. So okay. Like, like I was saying to, like, yes, I heard you. Like okay, so to, you've like admitted saying, that there are challenges with your party, even though you refuse to call it crisis. But let me ask you, because recently you also released a statement saying that uh, the ruling APC has been harassing your governors to defect and join its fold, you accuse it of using strong arm tactics. What exactly is that? And tell us why it has worked so far with the governors that have defected. Oh, the governors that have defected, any of them have issues. And the strategy that APC and the executive with government of President Mahmoud Buhari deploy is that they send the FCC to their respective states, they begin to harass them, and as they're harassing them, You'll be reading in the social media space. And even in the traditional media, oh, so also governor is going to join APC now. So also governor is going to join APC now. It's painful that governors who have immunity and who will leave office the same time that President Mohamed Buhari will leave office will be scared, will be afraid of intimidation. To an extent that they will betray their own people. They will betray the electorate that put them in office. So that is why I say, and I told Rufai that as media practitioners, as journalists, we have a responsibility 
to protect the democratic space so that this country doesn't end up a one-party state. Well, uh, just before you go, Kola, I, I saw a story about Senator Ali Ndume uh, saying that uh, the PDP plans to recruit the likes of uh, Hosh Papi uh, to rig uh, the 2023 elections. <laughs> so, is there any such plan in the works? Very briefly, we have less than a minute to go. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abati. I can see that you are, you are, you are, even, you are even laughing to the, to, the, to, the question, to the issue raised by Dr. Abati. No, uh, because I mean, we would like to know whether very, the PDP very, very is also no, in touch I, with Hosh yes, Papi. No, it's very, very, it's very, no, I will, I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> it is laughable. But I am sorry to say that such disposition, such comments can come out of a Senator Ali Ndume. To me, it is the height of responsibility. And that is a fact. But let me state clearly that the global best practice all over the world in electioneering is e-voting, e-transmission of results. If the likes of Ali Ndume had been winning their election in free, fair, credible, and transparent process. He didn't need to be afraid of e-voting. He also does not need to be afraid of e-transmission of results. So the fact that he's afraid of this shows clearly that he had won all his election through means that are not noble. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kola Logodian, for joining us. Thank you very much indeed.